start by asking you, what is Inspiral? What's your mission? How do you guys operate? How do you get funding? Um, Inspiral is a professional network. Uh, basically, people put together by principles, by values. A group of professionals who really want to use their working life and all of their time spent working on things that matter, on meaningful work. Um, and so we came together, it was at first a group of sort of freelancing professionals, which really evolved into a platform for launching social enterprise startups. So how many people do you have in, in Inspiral? The network is about 150 people around New Zealand and the world, and we've launched more than a dozen social enterprise startups now. And your legal form is what? A typical corporation or a partnership or? Well, the Inspiral Foundation is incorporated as a limited liability company with a charitable constitution. And basically, there's a whole constellation of all the Inspiral ventures around it, which have a voluntary contribution back to the foundation. And we use those resources to try to achieve our social mission. So basically, you're a platform for spawning and supporting new social enterprises, if I understand. Sometimes we call ourselves the primordial ooze, out of which crawl these <laughs> wonderful new startups. Yeah. All right. So I guess my question would be this. Now, you guys, you were one of the winners against companies all over the world, big companies, little companies, one of the winners in this digital freedom emprise. So talk a little bit about what was the problem, and it was this new collaborative platform. Maybe you can talk a little bit about what problem you were trying to solve, this thing called Lumio. Very clever. Was that one of those computer-generated things where whatever? <laughs> anyway, well, kind of. I don't know what, how that came, but Lumio was your answer. But maybe we can start and we'll hopefully show a demo you can talk about. But what was the problem you were trying to solve? Well, Lumio came out of basically a meeting between the Occupy movement and Inspiral as well, a business network. Wait, the network. Occupy movement? That's right. Occupy Wellington. They uh -huh. were camped out uh, in front of City Hall. Um, and they were trying to organize... You don't have many illegal bankers in New Zealand. So, <laughs> like, what were they occupying here? I, I understand Occupy Wall Street. I don't understand Occupy Wellington, but... Just really a different idea of how to organize society that's a lot more fair and inclusive to everyone. All right. Um, and they came to see us at Inspiral and said, hey, we hear you're good with technology. Can you help us to create some sort of software where we can make decisions collaboratively with people who can't always come to meetings, with large numbers of people who can't all talk at once? And I said basically, wow, we have exactly the same problem in our business network of 150 people trying to operate uh, in a very flat, collaborative manner. And they said, can you build it for us? And we said, well, no, but we'll build it with you. Here's a desk. And so at the very beginning, it was um, sort of a real meeting between social change makers and business change makers. So that's an unusual partnership between the anarchists and like now this is a business tool that's being used by larger organizations as well? Yeah, well Vivian, do you want to talk about some of the great organizations that are currently using Lumio and how it's working? Yeah, absolutely. So Lumio, um, pretty much we've discovered relates to vertical markets rather than horizontal markets. So any organization, actually almost any group of people, including families, who suddenly have a need to be able to make decisions together in a way they haven't before are enjoying Lumio. And um, so we are obviously counting the small business and medium business and enterprises who uh, really want to be distributing decision making amongst their stakeholding group or their um, staff or their customers. Um, but equally, we are measuring civic unrest in the world because where there are civilians who want to have more say about inequity or the way things are going, they organise protest on Twitter, but they discuss and deeply consider what action they'd like instead on Lumio. It's been pretty amazing, actually, to see. I mean, Lumio's been released in 22 languages, and what we see is civil unrest in Brazil. Lumio's released in Portuguese. Civil unrest in Ukrainian. Lumio's been released in Ukrainian. A bunch of activists in Taiwan translated it into Chinese. So you really look, you can follow the news and follow Lumio, and it's amazing to me that that's just as essentially useful to businesses as well. This is a way of making collaborative decisions. So how do you get a lot of people engaged productively in making decisions? It's actually really simple. It's deceptively simple. It's just combining a conversation with a decision making. So you basically, you've got comments down one side, um, and you can put, you know, you can have different groups that have different privacy settings. You invite who you want, who the decision making stakeholders are in your group. Um, you can have discussions. There's a really clear discussion topic. There's a context behind the discussion. People can share all different viewpoints, bring up things that other people wouldn't have thought of, and really together work towards a good solution. Oftentimes what you see is the discussion will start quite broad, but then a solution will emerge, and at that point people can raise proposals. It brings up a little pie chart so you can see how everybody feels. It invites you to state your position and give sort of a short sort of Twitter length 
um, statement about how you feel about that discussion. Um, and what's really cool is it creates an archive as you go, and then somebody coming in later can just look at those statements of position and really quickly catch themselves up. If there's agreement, you can see. If there's disagreement, you can very importantly understand why. So it goes way beyond just a survey that, okay, I know people are unhappy, but I don't know why, to we really understand why, and then we're going to work together to evolve the actual proposal. So let me give you, let me ask about a, just a maybe a hypothetical case. Let's say I'm a sales associate several levels down, and I think that the compensation model is all wrong. It's, it's incentivizing us for the wrong things. It's not rewarding the people really take the time to nurture new accounts and so on. How, how practically do I raise that as an issue? And I, and I think there's something that needs to change. I'm not sure exactly what. I mean, in most organizations, that person is just pretty much disempowered. They can, they can bitch and they can whatever. But how does this platform, how does that help me if I'm one of those like positive activists in my company? So, um, for a large company who's using Lumio, they almost always organise in subgroups. There'll be one group with everybody in the organisation, and then the subgroup of people that you naturally work with each day. One of the basic principles of Lumio is anyone can raise a discussion, and anyone can raise a proposal. And just right there, such a simple principle turns most hierarchies on, on their head, because if anybody can raise a discussion, you can't control the conversation that happens in a very transparent public place. Um, so of course, you never could control the conversation. Yeah. But in the past, people couldn't come together. Yeah. So OK, but that's a practical question. Because you know, a lot of companies have used wikis and other kinds of things. How do you move from the general complaint, I don't think this is working, yeah. to a positive proposal? And then how, do you build a, how does Lumio help you build a consensus around that? Yeah, well, this is where Deceptively Simple comes in. Lumio has been des designed really consciously to be a productive environment. Most environments we see on the web are designed to be um, a platform for sharing information but not doing anything with the information. Exactly. So it's like, um, you know, I'm sitting over there just now tweeting away and some people will share what I tweet or some people will favourite it but nobody's going to take an action as a result. So Lumio's designed so that um, the conversation goes deep, that all the points of view are in the room fast, and that then you can iterate the outcome so you get the best possible outcome for that group at that time. The outcome is then recorded and shared. So action as a result of the outcome is way more likely. This is not just about another platform to share information. It's a platform to organize action. So how do I go, how do I go, I mean, how does a proposal actually emerge here? Because one of the problems, you know, we've all been, as, as we interact with the web and particularly social platforms, we've all been um, kind of taught by social media that everything is 140 characters, everything is kind of a brain fart. You don't really have to take any responsibility for like suggesting something yeah. positive, particularly it's kind of complicated. So how do you move from, I have this complaint or whatever, how does, how does that proposal actually emerge? Okay. <laughs> I think it's a real shift, as you're talking about that mental shift, um, between feeling like I'm complaining to someone to, we all own this problem together. This is our organization and these are our goals. Ownership was that big principle back there, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But it's not a superficial kind of ownership. It's a real deep ownership of those outcomes. I've been involved from the beginning. I've co-created these solutions. And now I'm completely invested and nobody's dragging their heels. Nobody's resisting because Lumia is not about a majority rules poll. It's about let's actually get out all of the issues. Let's get the minority perspectives that might be really important. Get people's concerns out there. I'll tell you, some of my favorite Lumio discussions are the ones where there's a proposal that fails. It's really, really great to see. Somebody thinks, okay, this is the best idea. Let's go for it. And then somebody else will put up uh, sometimes really important information that causes everybody to change their mind. The proposal fails, but I know that the next proposal coming is going to be a, a real evolution, and everybody's going to understand why that decision was made the way it does, and we're going to be able to take action together. So how is this different than simply voting? Because there's plenty of things where you can measure number of likes and whatever. But you're describing something that sounds like the decision process is a little bit more sophisticated than everybody just saying, like, I like this or I don't like this. So that's a really good question. And it's quite subtle, but also really simple. The main difference is you can change your mind. 
And that seems really obvious, but with a poll, you get a snapshot of a view for a particular point in time, and then you're done. With Lumio, you listen to, you, you express your view, and you might say disagree at the beginning with the proposal, but then you listen to a whole lot of people's positions, and you allow that very magical human thing, which is allow yourself to be changed as a result of the dialogue. And that's when we're at our best as people, when we're not defending a position, but we're allowing ourselves to be changed by each other. And so people, it's different from a poll in that it's, it's a dialogue and a discussion and a developing understanding between sometimes a large group of people which surfaces an outcome none of us would have thought of on our own. And therein lies the, the essential magic, really. So, I mean, in a way, what you're saying is that people will find the best solution and will naturally gravitate if it's open and it's transparent and if they feel they understand how you got to that decision and they can be confident that all the voices were considered, the other options got considered. Yeah. But now this raises a different question. You know, one of, the, one of the defenses that I often come up against for why we have the hierarchy is it, it, makes, us, it makes things faster. Right? There's somebody with clear accountability, they can listen, you know, and a good, a good leader will say, you know, I sat in the meeting, I listened to all the alternatives, and then somebody has to decide. So how fast is this? Does this like speed things down, slow things up? Would a CEO say, gee, if we debate this thing online, we're going to be debating it for a year. Um, really, the essential problem Lumio is trying to solve is short-circuiting that traditional trade-off between inclusiveness and efficiency. It doesn't have to be either or, it can be both, and it has to be both in these new, kind, new paradigm kinds of organizations that, that you're talking about and that, that I live every day. It absolutely must be both. So we go very quickly. It doesn't matter where in the world somebody is. We have meaningful involvement from remote team members in lots of the organizations that use Lumio. We've got, um, for example, example, just, you know, if you've got a small child and you can't make the meeting, or if you're sick, or if you have different abilities, or, I mean, we're talking about real diversity, real inclusiveness, and the, the true value that comes out of it. Is that. there a clock that runs on this somehow that limits the conversation and pushes people to consensus? I like it because Lumia kind of strikes a balance. It starts with an open generative phase, which is, doesn't have a time limit, and then as soon as the proposal goes up, it will have a deadline. I've seen proposals on very complex issues turned around in a matter of sort of two hours because it sends you that notification. Everybody really succinctly gives their opinion. On the other hand, I've seen proposals go on for a month or more for a much longer term, deeper discussion where people can really communicate and their thinking will evolve over time. And is that time difference in general correlated with the complexity of the problem or the number of stakeholders that have to be heard? I've seen it go both ways. Sometimes the smallest decision causes the most controversy, as people may be familiar with. And sometimes something I think is going to be hugely complex and I would have wasted a lot of time second guessing. I put it out there, we get agreement, we move on. You know, one of the things, so first of all, let me, let me say thank you, but stay with us for another moment because I'd like, I'd like to take some questions quickly. And I'm hoping like you guys have 100% mark, market share in New Zealand like everywhere else because you really have to go read the story. If you go uh, search Lumio at Hack Management, you'll find it. But you know, I just want to comment on a thing about speed. And I'll tell you a little anecdote. I was with, and, and again, how counterintuitive some of this is, even though you make it sound very logical. I was a few weeks ago, I was with a head of sales for one of the biggest high-tech companies is one of the new generation. I'm not going to tell you who, but you all know who it is, and they're celebrated for being open and all these wonderful things. So I'm, I'm talking to somebody who has 12,000 people in their organization, and they had done some kind of a big sales reorg with a compensation plan, and I said, like, how did it go? And he said, well, it just produced this complete shitstorm of, of defensive and reaction and people like all over the world now on the back foot. And I said, well, like, did you blog about this to begin with? You're like, here's the problem. What do you guys think? What's going on? He says, no, no, we wanted to do it really quickly. So we had the consultants and we did the whole thing in three months. And I had to remind the guy, there's a difference between speed to implementation and speed to success, yeah, exactly. right? And like speed implementation really doesn't matter very much if you spend the next six months trying to, so, so let me ask just one last question and then let's turn it over to the, to the group. I have a sense, you know, as, as I've watched these tools get deployed, that often you need something more than just a tool. There's something that's more contextual around it. Can you, can you just comment on that? Do you see situations where it's like really it's transformative and where it just kind of sits there and never really gets used? Yeah. yeah, that's been a really big learning for us. We thought we were just building a tool that everybody would want to use. They'd see it and do it. And our learning has been that, of course, 
um, flash of the blinding obvious, um, it, that whenever Lumio is being deployed in an organisation, it requires culture change. And uh, so I've come to think of this as um, it, starting off thinking about the people. Who are the people in this group? And what, are the, what is their relationship to decision making right now? And how will we begin a journey from starting right off with conversation through to them feeling confident to use a tool and trusting that their voice will be heard. And then once we've done that work, we can start thinking about place and identity and purpose, which leads us to processes, work processes. Which work processes will we change to support this new collaborative culture? And then finally, you get to technology. It's way down there, and it's somebody used the word enabler over here before. I just think enab um, technology is always an enabler of the culture that you are wanting to um, have in your organisation. And in this case, Lumio enables collaboration and shared decision making. So um, you really have to pay attention to people and purpose and process before you get before to... Before you get to the technology. Yeah. Because we'll leave it there then. I would just encourage you to Google it, watch the YouTube video. It is a really, really, really cool platform. And you know, I, I, I would just close with this thought. You know, we, we talk about involvement and empowering people, and I think over the last 20 years, one of the ways of thinking about that was giving people a share of ownership. And I know you guys are a co-op, and I think that's, that's an important part of it. But I see a lot of companies with employee stock ownership plans, but no real involvement. And I think if you want people to feel ownership, having 1% of 1% of 1% of the shares is way less important than having a share of voice in the decisions that matter. So thank you guys for making a difference. And thank great you. to hear your story. Thank you. Thank you.